All right, let's dive in here. Obviously, the only lefty here. And so I think he's a better player, personally, uh, throwing the ball down the field than he is on the quick throws. Not that he can't throw the quick throws. Got a nice quick release, but sometimes I believe his feet can get away from him a little bit. So they're going to run uh, what we call a bullets combination right here. So it's a little hook with the bullets by the back, which is kind of a half swing, half wheel route over here. So he's going to read it to the back side. Now you see how the backside receiver is trying to, he's going out of his way to try to get a little bit of a rub here so we can get this throw up over the top. Not sure what makes Michael want to throw this one right here. There's not a lot of space there. Thought maybe the throw up over the top, but maybe safety in position, taking it away. Uh, so he didn't like that side. So he decided to try to get that throw to the inside right here. And he puts the ball on him. So you see good position, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to take you to the end zone copy right here. And I just want you to watch his feet. So this is one thing that concerns me a little bit. So you'll see a lot of times on these quick throws, even on some of the deeper throws, his feet are set this way, and then he'll throw it off this way. Now, there's some guys that are really, really good at being able to throw with their core, take their feet out of the throws, and be accurate with it, which Michael Penix is accurate with it, but it's something that concerns me. I'd like to see his feet lined up. When his feet are lined up, he's so much better, and that's the way uh, we're talking about Jaden Daniels, we're talking about Drake May, Caleb Williams, all of them are the same. When their feet are lined up in a position to throw, they're always more accurate. Technique will always lead you, although good throw here with a guy right on his back, put it right on top of him. Uh, just not sure what made him go to that read instead of either working to the other side or maybe taking the shot down the field. All right, so again, you got to take everything with a grain of salt sometimes because we're going to run a corner route right here that doesn't win, and they really only have one other route coming on this particular play over to this side. His O-line was really, really good this year. Uh, pressure starts to come down on him a little bit. Just has to throw this one away. I like the fact that he doesn't try to complete this ball with a lot of bodies there. Uh, he's just going to work through and get rid of this football and save the sack. Sometimes that's the best play, right? Sometimes you got a graded quarterback, not just completion or incompletion, but was it the right decision? Nobody open right there, pockets collapsing, boom, throw the football away and live for another down. Okay, so you see the bringing pressure right here. Now, I'm not sure if this is a hot or not uh, based on what the offensive line does. Looks like this guy is their hot, so you got to come out and be ready, and they're running a choice route right here. So, again, you're going to see kind of the feet open up. Got to get this ball out quick. You know, these quick throws got to be set. Got to be ready, especially if you know you're hot. Got to get this football out of your hands here. Waits a little bit too long with the hot pressure and then misses the quick throw right there. So write some little things on those quick throws. Want to see him come back, want to see him ready. If you know you're hot right there, man, you got to be holding on that back foot and almost anticipating the throw instead of waiting for your guy to come out of it. All right, this is something that he did extremely well this year. Does a nice job here. We got all of our guys over here to this side. You notice we're just one on one back to this side. Had some good receivers on the outside, obviously. And He's going to take his one-on-one -on -one shot. Boom, right in the bucket. And again, I'm going to show you the feet because this concerns me a little bit. But you see, feet are kind of aimed this way, and he's throwing the ball off this way. But he's got a knack for being accurate with it. Boom, look at that. I mean, can you throw it any better? Over the outside shoulder, great job by the receiver to squeeze that and hold all of this space to the sideline. But that's just a perfect throw. You find your one-on-one, -on -one, you go drop a dime to your guy down the field. Much like Jaden Daniels, I thought Michael Penix was really, really good at throwing the football down the field accurately over and over and over again. There you go. Here's another one. Like, I don't know how he knew to do this. Uh, he's pump faking over here like they're running a fake screen. And then they've got the double post 
back to this side. So he pumps and it's almost as if he comes back without seeing anything and puts it to this post back here. So you see pump, turns and sets. Almost as if he's not reading anything, just counting on it. But again, you see him set up here. When his feet are set more down the line, he's throwing this ball more down the line. Boom, perfect throw. I like the action, the ability to set left or pump left. And then boom, get his feet set back to the right hand side, line up and let that ball go another dime down the field. Another tough one, got a little pressure right here. Okay, so again, not really sure what the concept is here. Looks like they've got a bit of a high low right here, but we're breaking down to run this out on this corner, which makes it really hard to anticipate. So like the throw probably should be to this deep guy right here, but you see the pressure's on top of him already and he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Need this guy to get out quicker so I can make a decision to decide if I can throw it up over the top. Instead, another one of those situations where pressure's coming, I don't have anything, nice job just throwing the football away. And I'll grade them that way. That to me is a plus. If you've got nothing down the field, if there's no read to make, and you just get rid of the football and save yardage, save down. Sometimes the best uh, answer is to throw the football away. And there again is another nice opportunity to see, hey, that's a win. That's a plus for a quarterback because nothing was out there in front of him. Pressure's coming. Don't take the sack. Don't lose the eight or nine yards and get the ball out of your hands. Okay, so again, you see his ability to get the ball out quick. Okay, so he's got a nice quick release where he can snap it here. So this is a route that everybody runs, the inside fade. Saw this with Jaden Daniels, uh, the hitch on the outside and then the stick on the inside. Okay, they're mirroring it up top, so you see the hitch and then the inside fade coming right here. Love for these guys to read this outside in. Okay, so read it outside in. Peek outside first, see if you get the corner off. Think you got one of these two throws right here instead of jamming the stick in all the time. But good placement of the football. We'll take it from the end zone copy. That's one thing about this Washington tape that's tough when they're at home. It's a really, really wide copy, so it's tough to see. But you see, perfect placement. You see how quick, boom, ball comes out quick. And then perfect placement on the football, high and away from the defender. Accuracy. That's what accuracy looks like. Not just completing it, but putting the ball in perfect position against a particular look. Okay. Another nice little play right here. And again, protecting his guy. So they're going to run a go out here. And then it looks like a choice where this guy breaks outside but settles in the hole because he's got a corner to the outside. As a quarterback, you got to protect your receiver. Don't lead him into a hit. Boom, right there. Put it on his outside number. He's sitting down. And I like the quick release. Get the ball out. Boom, right there. Get it on top of your guy. Allow him to do something after the catch and not take a big hit. So you're seeing some real good stuff, right? He gets back, he's very decisive with his throws. He's not holding the football for a long time. He's got a nice quick pop release. I wanna see him clean up the feet a little bit, but the feet haven't really hurt him. Uh, he's found ways to be accurate, no matter what position his feet are in. Here we go again, another deep throw. So this is kind of that choice route here. We're gonna run the fade with the choice route over the top of it. Sees this guy kind of sitting and holding in there. I'm gonna go take my shot down the field. Really like it. It's almost like it's a double team underneath. Find your one-on-one. -on -one. Boom, in the bucket. So we'll watch the feet again. Feet are doing the same sort of thing. Very open as a lefty with his feet. Okay, so his feet's hard to tell here, but his feet are going almost more towards the sideline and kind of flips it out on the money. All right, so we're coming back. We've got what I call a corner concept. So it's an out and then a corner. We get it against cover two, meaning they've got 
a corner that's down right here, and this is our read. Does he stay high? Does he go low? And so Penix, you see right there, gets him to turn his hips. His hip turned right there, so now he's going to take this throw right here. Now there's two ways that you can throw this. You get that hip turn right there, you can drive this throw and hit it in the hole and hit it before the corner, or if you get the read uh, the way you like it, you can lay this thing out to the boundary because you see that this corner is inside the numbers and you lay it out up over the top of him and you get it just misses this out over the top right here. I like the idea. One of the other things is I just want you to watch his set. See how he sets right here? So he's setting right here, so he sets a little bit quick. Why is that important? Because when we set quick, we don't get the full read here uh, based on the timing of the throw. So I want to set to be able to throw this one. So I'm coming back saying I'm throwing the deep one. I'm going to get seven steps. I'm going to quick hitch it. And that extra time in the drop allows me eyes on the corner to know what he's doing. Okay, so we set quick here. And so when he sets quick, he's saying I got the corner. But then you notice, what does the cornerback do? Cornerback starts to fall off. So if we're at seven steps, we like to think that when we get to the top of our drop, this guy's going to be in one position or another. He's either falling back, which says throw the underneath one, or he's still up in a tight position. And if I know he's up in a tight position until I get to that deep seven step drop type timing, he shouldn't be able to get back and cover this corner. So he's a little bit short on his drop here. So he set, see how quickly he set. Now his guy's not even close to being ready. So he's getting his read right now, instead of two more steps, getting his read a little bit later, and then maybe making the throw to the out. Because right here says throw the corner, but the timing's not there. Now, by the time the timing is there, it says throw the out. Little teaching point there for any quarterbacks and coaches that are watching. Tie your feet to the deeper route. Okay, so seven steps to the deeper route, because I can always recover underneath. When we try to throw the underneath one first, and it's not there right now, and we try to go to the one over the top, we allow a defender to be able to cover both of those routes, because he covers the quick one when we're looking at it, then we go to the deep one late, now he still covers that one. So I like to read it top down, and seven step drop, because we can always be late to the, to the out route if the corner is falling off. Another good throw. Bring the interior pressure right here so nobody's in the middle of the field. So I love coming to the middle of the field. But nice throw, get back, plant the feet, let it go. Nice throw out in front of his guy. Again, accuracy is so key. And accuracy is not just completing the football, it's putting the football in perfect placement. We've seen it on deep routes so far. Outside shoulder on both of those deep routes where they can hold off the defender. We saw it on that quick stick. Guy was trying to undercut it. He puts it high and away where only his guy can get it. And right there on the end, puts it out in front of his receiver so his receiver can continue to run through it. Right? Yak. We want to put Yak always on the receiver. And a lot of times, Yak goes to the receiver as it should. But Yak is developed because the quarterback puts the ball in perfect position so the receiver doesn't have to slow down and can continue to run and find those windows. Like the read right here. So we've got kind of a three-man concept here. I'm not sure why both of these guys are kind of turning, but we've got an out, a hook, and a corner. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing is we're seeing the corner off. Once the corner's off, I'm coming out and I'm thinking this one first off of this linebacker. This linebacker buzzes hard out underneath it. We replace to the hook to the inside. He holds right there, boom, get the ball out. I like it, quick feet, bang. Okay, gets the ball out, gets it to his receiver in a position for, again, his receiver to make a run after catch because he gets it out so quick. Not wasting any time on the quick drop. Back, set his feet, get the ball out. Okay, so here's another one, kind of the same idea to the front side, take it. Okay, take this one. Okay, he just took the last one. So you ask, why, why didn't you take this one? And again, we all miss reads as quarterbacks. Oh, I think this guy's going to jump it. I thought he was a little bit tighter than he was. Okay, I get it, but he should probably take that one right there, and then they're running the mesh concept from there. So quick out, and then we've got these double meshes, and you work to the shallow. So even when he misses a read, sometimes I like it because now I get to see his process. 
in this process. Goes right to the shallow in front of him. And again, another perfect ball. Right on his guy so his guy doesn't have to slow down. Can keep going. Get pick, picks up another five yards. Again, process. Love the process. Similar type play here. Okay, so we're going to run the flat. Looks like a corner here. And then we're going to run the mesh. Okay, and then we're going to check the back over here. So it's really one to two, to three, to four, to five. Okay, this is how this is really going to play out. So he comes out, okay, he doesn't like the front side, right? That's covered, this has got bad leverage. Coming to the shallow, here's a guy sitting in front of the shallow, I don't have it. Watch him work all the way back, boom, boom. Love his feet, able to move his feet with his eyes and get all the way back to number five and get a nice little play right here, right? Don't see a lot of guys getting to number five, okay? And how quickly he gets there. Boom, boom, three, four, five. Gets back there and gets through it. These are the kind of things that can translate at the next level. Understanding what you're seeing. Understand what takes away a receiver and get through your progressions quickly. Got all the way to number five, which doesn't happen very often. Really, really impressive right there. Okay, another good read right here. We got a four strong type look, which can make things a little bit tough because we push extra guys over there. But they're gonna run a guy here in the middle, gonna run a guy in a hook. Not really sure what we're doing here. It almost looks like we're coming right on top of that, but then a swing, okay? So this particular read, I'm coming here to this guy first. As long as this guy holds inside with number three, we're good. Now the read comes off of this next backer. This next backer widens to the swing. Okay, so watch that as it plays out. Inside backer holds. Inside backer holds. Outside backer matches to the swing. He is going to work right here to this hook. Ball actually gets knocked down. But I like the idea. Might be a little bit late. See how he's hopping back there? See that DB breaking on it? Okay, we want to get that thing out, but again, Kind of unclear what we're doing uh, here. I might like him if he gets this guy to widen to work to this outside guy instead of the inside guy, but I see what he sees right here. Just want to get this out a tick sooner, but it's one of the things that's hard about four strong is there's lots of bodies over there that you have to decipher because you've got four guys you're reading. You've got three, four underneath defenders here, right? So you're trying to read all of those bodies in a quick fashion. It's not an easy thing to do. I recognize that, but maybe just a touch sooner there because if that gets through, does the DB win on that one or does he win getting the ball there just before the DB can get to it? Okay, another nice job here with his eyes. Looking left, comes back to the right, finding the window. So again, this is kind of a funky coverage right here, looks like a quarter's on the backside, but the front side is a little bit different here. They've got kind of this triangle defense here, one guy playing outside, one guy going inside, but as he comes back here, able to recognize that quickly, another quick hitch, find the open body over here. Boom, put the ball on the outside number, right? He's trying to tell the receiver where to go. Hey, closest defender is inside, I'm gonna put it on your outside, turn outside. Turn outside, I'm trying to help you to stay away from him. Receiver turns back to the inside here, right back into the defender. But again, this is something that I look at and I go, oh, he's throwing him open. It's a drill that we work on. Where's the tightest defender? Put the ball to the other shoulder. He does that right here really nicely. Okay, tough footwork right here. Okay, he's spinning all the way around. He's got to turn and get set. And again, you notice feet find it kind of falling away this direction. It's a right read, getting it out here to your flat. You've got to flip those feet and stick that back foot. He's falling away from the throw. Ball gets away from him a little bit on what should have been an easy completion. Uh, and so again, one of the things that I want to see him continue to work to clean up is getting that front foot in the direction of the throw. Front foot going this way, trying to throw it back this way. Now it's worked out for him on some other throws, but this one 
ends up costing him because he never gets his weight stopped and towards his target. All right, tough right here, right? This is one of those where looks to me like they're gonna run the corner, then they're gonna run the double post. Got a flat coming out here and a swing coming out here. So we usually look backside first, just to make sure these guys hold back there. And then we try to read the double post to the front side off of this near safety. But this is just good coverage on the back end, right? They end up passing it all off, all the way across the board. Nobody open here whatsoever. He's got a tuck, try to make a play. Could throw it away here too, but you just see it. Just good coverage. Not much Penix can do on that particular play. Okay, a little slip by his wide receiver outside. Turns into an interception right here. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, again, I, I like the idea. They got the wide motion and then the stop route. I'm not sure uh, if this guy's supposed to be a little bit wider on this. I like that Penix is finding, you know, he's got kind of the inside guy and the outside guy. Inside guy tucked in. The timing is good here. Just whether it's a slip or he just throws it a little bit too wide or he wants the guy to be a little bit wider. I think the decision is good. The throw, communication, process between wide receiver and quarterback, not so good, obviously, leading to the interception. All right. So, again, kind of a tough one right here uh, with concepts because they're gonna just run the choice underneath and then over the top of it, they have a go route. So I hate when guys have to look at a choice and then recover back up to a go route on that play. So as he comes out, it's really tough. It's covered really, really well. Two bodies underneath. Now he's trying to throw a go route already outside the numbers against a DB. Just kind of got stuck over there and has to throw a go route late. Tries to put it on the back shoulder. We'll take a look at it because, again, I can't tell from this far away. But, again, not, not a bad football, but we get stuck over there because we don't have anything else. We're trying to get this choice, and you'll see it's clamped from both sides. So I'm forced, if I want to stay on that side, to go to whatever route's over there. Now it's a late go route. i got to try to make it work. Tough to do. All right. Got our one-on-one -on -one again. Same thing that we saw earlier. Everybody over here, get your one-on-one -on -one with all these receivers that you've got. Hey, take it. Nice ball right here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just give your guy a chance. He puts it right on top of him. Receiver goes up and makes that 50-50 ball. Makes that catch for a touchdown. But what you can see is the decision-making, right? For the most part, the decision-making has been really, really good. When he doesn't have anything, he's throwing the football away. When he's got something, he's quick to get the ball out of his hands, right? He's giving his guys a chance with just about every throw. Okay, coming back, similar double post combination. Comes, works a little bit trying to get this safety, which he does to turn his hips this direction. Post, post, he's going to the outside post. and just misses this one up over the top, right? And I can't count, right? I don't expect everybody to make every deep throw. When you throw the ball down the field as much as some of these teams do, you're not gonna make all the deep ones, right? Those are hard. The farther you gotta throw it, the more inaccurate, the more you're going to miss those throws. So I like the decision again. Double post, gets everybody chasing inside. I'm reading the outside one that's one-on-one. -on -one. Just don't happen to hit the throw right there, but. We're not gonna knock these guys every time they miss a deep throw, because that's just a normal occurrence. Okay, so concept now is instead of running the go route, we're gonna run the in, and then the choice off of that. So I like this because it looks to me, and maybe this isn't a choice, maybe this is a pivot right here, because he steps inside so I didn't know if Penix thought he was going to break inside. 
But either way, he's looking at this in. You see it's covered up right here, so he's got to bounce to this one late. He's got to recover to that one. And again, nice job getting the ball out quickly. His feet aren't lined up. His feet are lined up more to the inside, but he's able to torque his body, get the football out, and get a completion. So doing a nice job with his progressions, understanding where to go with the football, not jamming it into tight spaces. Okay, so they really just have, and again, not really sure what we're doing here. It's kind of a switch, what we would call switch seam. Okay, so outside guy running the seam, inside guy running the go, or the stop route. You get middle closed here, you'd like to work this middle safety one direction or the other. Looks like Penix is trying to come back here, but this guy is just running into the middle of the field. So instead of staying out here, down the seam, maybe giving you a shot, but everything chases. So now we're gonna have to throw this late to the outside. Nobody really open on this play. We're gonna try to put the back shoulder, but really becomes just another throw away because nothing's happening for us. So on plays like that, right, it's hard to evaluate because you're not saying, well, Penix didn't do anything wrong. You know, whatever he was reading, I'm not really sure, but everybody was covered on that play. Now he's either just throwing it away or maybe taking a shot to one of his guys, throwing it hard outside and high where my guy gets it or nobody gets it. Those are good decisions, right? If I'm playing in the NFL and I've got that play and nothing's open and I throw that thing away, I'm giving myself a plus. I'm feeling good about that play because I'm doing the right thing. So don't get caught up with L when he doesn't complete the football. Got to understand the whole scenario. Here, I like it. Hot situation. This guy coming free. Get it out to one of your guys. You're reading basically this next linebacker. Does he always run into the flat right now? No, he doesn't. He holds it off. Get the ball out there. I'd like to see him a little bit more fluid here. And what do I mean by that? Like, recognize who our hot guy is and continue to fall away from this. Draw that guy to you. Instead of here, he kind of sets and then reacts to the flat outside. I want him to kind of see this ahead of time and have that ball out right now. Like he knows right now that guy's coming, lay that football out, get it to him a little bit quicker, but still, good decision, recognizing the pressure, getting the ball out of his hands. All right, so here we are again. Kind of one of these same sort of concepts here where they're running an inside fade and then a hitch right here. He's got press on the inside fade and he feels this guy go running out to the hitch. So I understand he got what he wants in terms of the press, but you see the inside fade is so wide, right? He's already three yards from the sideline, which makes this a really, really tough throw. It was all set up by the split. So I don't know how much they talk about it. I'd love to see him go, uh, it's too wide, it's too tight over there. I'm gonna work back to my juke to the inside. But again, how do I give him a negative? Because hey, you get press man on the inside fade with one of our receivers. We've hit it a million times, make the throw. That's exactly what he's doing, putting it out there. And again, we miss another deep throw, right? That's what becomes hard about deep throw after deep throw after deep throw. You make some of them, but you're going to miss some of them because things are a little bit off and you gotta be perfect with the throw. Could have easily worked back to the inside if he felt it was too much of a squeeze out there, but it was set up that way from the formation, so hard to blame him for that, okay? Here's another mesh concept, okay? So I don't know how teams do it, but a lot of times you peak this first, and then from there, you're gonna go uh, through this mesh combination oh sorry this one is the mesh okay hook mesh right so one two three four and then five we've already seen this one time him working all the way through it so here's another one covered covered trying to come back covered everywhere and really just another throw away right here doesn't do as nice of a job of bringing his feet see his feet stay to the right hand side now he's going to come back and try to throw it to his left but Really doesn't matter. Nobody open there, so it's really more just a throwaway. And again, nice job saying, hey, nothing's open. Don't try to force it, jam it into a covered guy, just throw it away. All right.
right? Tight split go route here. If you get one on one, you can always take that. Then from there, they're going to run the cross back coming into the flat. So really it's one if you just kind of peek at it, but then you're really just kind of reading this high low right here. Got the go clears out. Nice job getting in there to that cross because that's the biggest thing, right? As I see, and I got to feel this corner out here, this corner, falls off and passes this off to the safety. So I can't let this cross continue to get wider and wider and try to throw it out by the numbers. I got to recognize that I got a cover two corner out there. I got to put this ball on him right in there on the hash. Nice timing, good read, boom. One hitch, ball's on his guy, protects him from any kind of a hit. All right, so tough concept here. Not really sure what we're trying to do. We got two crossers here. So right, a guy to the flat, then a crosser. So I guess we're kind of thinking high, low once again here. If I can get this guy to attach, I'm going to go one here. But then we're bringing this other crosser kind of right into that same spot, which makes it tough. And then we've got the end back here. So I'm assuming it's just kind of one, two, three right here. I don't know, does he have number one? Gosh, it even looks like number, sorry, this one right here is almost stopping right here. I don't know, really, really tight concept here. Pressure's coming once again, just throws this thing away down the field and lives for another day. So we've seen that a number of times from Penix already, right? His, his game is not to run around and create like some of these other guys. His game is, hey, when it's not there, throw the football away, live for another down confident that I can make the next play, don't have to make every play. I like that. I like that mindset, understanding what the strength of your game is, not trying to make everything into a run around creative type play. All right. So here's another one that's kind of similar right here. Yeah, that's hard for me to tell exactly what they're doing. This is here, here, we get a curl and then a shallow coming here. A lot of bodies to the backside. Nice job getting through his progression. Again, I don't know how they, they read this with all this going on, especially when you got two defenders here, but he's getting through this. He's getting hit right here, and he's getting this football out. I'm going to say it's going to the curl. Now, he might have just missed high to the shallow route because he wasn't really didn't really have his eyes there, so he might have missed high to this shallow route, I'm not really sure. But either way, it works out nicely and it's hard for me to really gauge what he should be reading on this particular play. Got a bunch of bodies in the middle of the field. If he's getting back to that curl, it's a great job deciphering the coverage and getting there quickly and avoiding that sack by getting the football out. Okay, so here we go again. Basically the same idea, your hitch, stick, vertical, inside fade, hitch. Could have come out and taken the hitch right now because as we come off, but again, you, you like to see the pre-snap. So he's got a little press right here. Uh, no, he's going to have one of those two probably to that side. He peeks to the front side, doesn't like what he has, could have taken the hitch, but doesn't like it. Going to come back to this inside fade against man again. Put it out there, go back and take a look, right? Give your guy a chance, good ball right there. I think they get a flag on this particular play, but another good ball down the field. Tough look, not a lot of space right there. And I keep saying this, right? These are some of the hard things to really evaluate these guys because I don't know exactly know what they're reading, what they're supposed to be looking at. Do they read that hitch to inside fade? Do they just look like Michael looked to his right there away from that. So I don't know if he was just holding the safety or if he was peeking for something front side and then just came back to throw the inside fade on the back side. But it's hard to know the processing part of some of these plays. Okay, again, quick pressure. Didn't happen to him a lot. But nothing really happening over here. They're running a little choice and go. And then they're going to run the return off of it. So neither one of these things happened very fast. So you see, 
right here. He's waiting. Boom, pressure's on him. Neither one of these things has really happened yet. Just has to get rid of this football a little bit quickly. Otherwise, he's going to have that double move right there, but has to get rid of it a little quickly and not able to connect. Okay, so the choice route, once again, could have picked either side. Decided to pick to this side. Boom, be ready for this guy on the break. He's back, he's set, ball's out as soon as his receiver's making that cut. Good timing, good position with the ball to his front side shoulder again. Maybe a little bit low here, right? And again, just watch the feet. Feet going this way, ball going this way. I know it doesn't seem like a big thing. And you see the number of guys, good throwers, get away with it. But it's always going to come back and haunt you at times. Right here. This ball, he's just left it low because he's trying to make the throw with all arm. Leaves the ball low. Still get a completion. Still a positive play, but if he puts the ball on him in a good position, then what? Maybe he scores a touchdown there. Okay. Hits this one. Again, not really sure what the thought process is right here. So we've got an inside fade or post or something here. We're going to run the corner and then we're going to run a hitch. Okay, this is a kind of a what I would call the Poco concept, kind of post corner with something going to the flat. They're just doing it a little different way. But again, Michael looks like he's looking to the right hand side and then he's coming back here. And I don't know what makes him think that he can throw this deep ball right here. It's almost as if he's just throwing this thing up. But the prayer is answered. His guy goes up and makes a play. If that safety has any awareness and sees the football, this probably is an easy interception. So these are the plays that I'd love to talk to him and go, okay, what were you thinking right here? It was almost as if I'm going to peek right, then I'm just going to come back and throw the deep one. I don't know, but it just works out right here. And what could be a negative play becomes a positive play right there, but it's hard to really... Uh, evaluate that play unless I could sit down with Michael and go, hey, talk me through this one. Did you get lucky here? Was there a reason why you thought you were going to hit that throw with that safety sitting back there where you're looking right just to move that safety, thinking that you could throw this football outside and away from him? I just want to hear his thought process. All right, here we go again. What do we got? One-on-one -on -one backside. Go take it. Great throw. Put it on the back shoulder. Go get yourself a touchdown. 